Now, reaction number one, it is the oxidation of primary alcohol to aldehyde functional group. How do I convert primary alcohol to aldehyde? It's actually very simple. I just need to remove this hydrogen from carbon, remove the hydrogen from oxygen, form a double bond between my carbon and my oxygen, and then I'll form my aldehyde functional group. In this case, you notice I've also uh, mentioned the change in the species, uh, minus two hydrogen. I think it is useful to know that alcohol oxidized to carbonyl compound, aldehydes, or ketone, I only lose two hydrogen. Because later when I compare this with oxidation from primary alcohol to acid group, then the change in the species is slightly different. Sometimes when we do structural elucidation question, this actually is useful. Maybe I have an unknown compound. I know that this is an alcohol. Then if the question tells me that, okay, this guy is being oxidized and you're given the molecular formula of the product that is being formed, what we can do is we can actually compare the changes in a species. Lose how many hydrogen, gain how many oxygen. I can deduce whether this functional group inside your unknown compound, whether is it a primary alcohol or a secondary alcohol. Actually, we are able to deduce that based on the changes in the species. How many hydrogen am I losing or how many oxygen am I gaining? So it's uh, good to keep this in mind eh, so that subsequently we can apply this. Now this reaction in terms of reagents and conditions, it is very, very specific. We have to use dichromine, dilute H2SO4, reflux with immediate distillation. It is very specific. If I compare the two oxidizing agents that we usually use, dichromine versus manganine, manganine it is too strong. So if you are using manganine, even if you do distillation, your aldehyde will be oxidized all the way to acid group, or rather your primary alcohol will be oxidized all the way to acid group. We will not be able to, to isolate the aldehyde functional group. Manganate, it is too strong. And we also need to do distillation. If I don't do distillation, if you are using dichromate without distillation, dichromate can oxidize primary alcohol to acid group as well. And because aldehyde is not very stable to oxidation, in fact, when we do the next functional group carbonyl compound, when we talked about the reactions of aldehyde, aldehyde can be oxidized by very mild oxidizing agents like Dolan's reagent, failing solution. All right, we will talk about it. So subsequently, we will have a reinforcement. Aldehyde, it is easily oxidized. So therefore, if I want to form aldehyde from primary alcohol, I need to do some form of control oxidation. I need to do some form of protection, prevent the aldehyde from being further oxidized. All right, so in terms of the reflux with distillation, maybe let us consider the process. I think it is interesting to uh, talk about it because the process of reflux with distillation uh, uh, in this case what we are doing is we are using uh, reflux with emitted distillation to try to remove uh, aldehyde product so what is the basis for separation for distillation is it a physical process or is it a chemical process now when we are asked separation of a reaction mixture involving an organic chem reaction now keep in mind uh, Separation of your reaction mixture, usually it focuses on the differences in the physical property, either differences in the physical state or differences in uh, solubility in either water or organic solvent. If I have a compound which is that I want, which is very soluble in water, then the rest of the compounds are um, more soluble in organic solvent. Then what I can do is I can put in water and I shake the reaction mixture the product that I want will dissolve in water. All the rest of the species that I don't want will remain in the organic solvent. Then from there, I can do separation. So differences in the solubility in a solvent, either equals medium or organic solvent, depending on the nature of the product that I want to form. Now sometimes there's a difference in terms of the boiling point. If there's, a, if there's a difference in the boiling point for miscible liquids, then what I can do is I can do distillation. I do distillation, the one with the lower boiling point will be distilled out. So you notice the basis for separation of a mixture, usually it focuses on physical property. So when we do organic chem, if the question asks you for separation, uh, then we need to be able to switch from organic chem, switch to chemical bonding, uh, switch to the topic under intermolecular forces. And in this case, I think it is good to discuss this. Uh, what do we mean by reflux with distillation? And how come I can distill aldehyde out? Aldehyde can be distilled out due to its lower boiling point. Later, we will do the comparison, we will do the discussion. Because 
what some of us might think is, okay, since for this case, if I can use reflux with immediate distillation to remove the product, I'll be high in functional group. So does it mean that when I do other reactions, I can always use reflux with immediate distillation to remove the product? Uh, this idea, we have to be a bit careful. Huh? It is not always true. Only when the product has a lower boiling point than the reactant, then you can remove it by distillation. Because distillation, it works on the basis that the species that gets distilled out first, it has a lower boiling point. If it has a lower boiling point, it will be distilled out first. So it will apply to aldehyde versus alcohol, but not necessarily it applies to all scenarios for all reactions. That's an overgeneralization. All right? Earlier we've mentioned that the concept for me to determine which of the species that get distilled out first, it is based on the physical property. So maybe let us discuss this. Because earlier we have mentioned this, if I can use reflux with immediate distillation to distill out the aldehyde product, if I'm oxidizing primary alcohol, what if I oxidize the alcohol all the way to an acid group? Is it possible for me to distill out the acid group as well? Now this one we have to be a bit careful huh? because we have to consider the difference in the boiling point. Now alcohol versus aldehyde, aldehyde will have a lower boiling point because in terms of the intermolecular forces, alcohol can form hydrogen bond, obviously, huh? because of your OH group. It can form hydrogen bond. Aldehyde functional group cannot form hydrogen bond. It has a oxygen and a hydrogen, but the hydrogen is not directly bonded to oxygen. So this guy is not capable of forming hydrogen bond. The intermolecular interaction will be weaker. Permanent dipo, permanent dipo interactions. Now in all cases, we consider this primary alcohol will be oxidized to the aldehyde, will be oxidized to my acid group. So what this means is all the R groups in this case, we have the same size, same number of carbon. So if the R groups are all the same, then the differences in the physical property or your boiling point has nothing to do with the R group because they are all identical. We only focus on the difference. Alcohol can form hydrogen bond. Aldehyde, no hydrogen bond. Weaker PD, PD. So therefore, boiling point is lower. This is the reason why we will expect aldehyde to be distilled out in this particular process huh, that we have here. It is possible for me to distill out the aldehyde, prevent the aldehyde from being further oxidized. Now, what if I oxidize my alcohol all the way to acid group? And can I use a similar method to distill out the acid group? Remove it from the alcohol. Now, this one becomes interesting because acid group, if I compare this to the alcohol, you will have more, more extensive hydrogen bond. Now, extensiveness of the hydrogen bond uh, it is dependent on the number of oxygen that we have. Uh, in this case, you notice alcohol has an OH group, so it can form a certain number of hydrogen bond with uh, neighbors. Acid group also has this OH group, so therefore, this OH group will be able to form the same number of hydrogen bonds with neighbors, same as my alcohol. In addition to that, this guy has an additional CO bond, so this oxygen, which is a partial minus charge, can also form hydrogen bond with neighbors, which means that my acid can form more extensive hydrogen bond as compared to alcohol, so the boiling point is expected to be higher. Acid should have a higher boiling point as compared to alcohol. So if you try to distill a mixture of alcohol and acid, actually the alcohol will come out first. You're trying to remove the reactant first. All right. So we just want to create this awareness. Huh? When I do distillation, it's just a, a reiteration. Actually, by right, we know that. Just to reinforce this idea, when we do distillation, the one with the lower boiling point will come out. So when we have these reagents and conditions, this particular set to form an aldehyde function group, the reason why we can do reflux with immediate distillation to remove the aldehyde is because aldehyde has a lower boiling point than alcohol. So it is possible for me to remove this guy out of the reaction mixture and prevent it from being further oxidized.